And Sean's got another one on. Keep, keep fighting, keep fighting. Keep. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. What is up Truex fam? I am here at Untamed Archery and today I'm going to be picking up my new compound bow and I'm also getting one for Philip because he's going to start shooting compound with me. We are moving away from crossbow. One of the things that I like to do is I like to be mobile when I hunt and I tell you that crossbow weighs about twice what a normal compound does and that makes a big difference when you're moving around. So we are going to be going in here, switching out, getting set up and looking at our new bow and we are super stoked to take you guys along with us and highlight another little local archery shop, Untamed Archery, and show you guys what they can do. So let's get in there and find out. Hey, what's going on today, buddy? Well, we're getting a new bow, right? Yeah. All right, guys, we are here, and I am with Brian, the owner of the shop, and he's looking at getting this ready. How's it How going, we, Brian? How we doing, buddy? We are doing good. Good. So what, are, so what we uh, ended up choosing, and I was here about, what, three weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah, three weeks ago, and what we ended up choosing and going with is uh, the Bear Species EV uh, Ready to Hunt. And... <laughs> one of the things that I really like about it is that it's a bow that you can come it, it's not you can come and get it's not super uh, expensive I mean really anybody who wants to get into hunting and start with a new bow can save up and get this I mean my boy worked over the summer and he bought his own uh, uh, ready to hunt species EV also which we'll be picking up today but today what we're gonna do is we're going to get into this we're going to get it sighted in we're gonna talk about some of its features we're gonna look for broadheads and see what we're gonna get for broadheads we're gonna talk about arrows and see what we're gonna get for arrows and all those kinds of things and Brian's gonna help us figure those things out that's why it's so important to support your local archery shops because I've been to the big box stores and generally it's really hard unless they got a really good guy working there it's really hard to get good solid information and you end up kind of feeling burned here you can't do that we'll make sure you end up with what you need yeah all right so they always send these it comes with a sight light right? yeah sight. and so they send a piece of plastic inside so it doesn't turn on on its way here so what how do you feel about the the new whisker biscuit and the in the sights that come on these i really like the v style biscuit the new v style biscuit mm. there, here's our piece of plastic so this with this v your air is always going to fall right in the exact same spot in the middle that's so amazing. I like this design better than just the old standard round. Makes it had room to move to or room to move, right? Right. It could, and it's not going to be much. It's still going to fall in the bottom of the circle, but it's not going to be quite as consistent as this is. Now I was watching a guy on on YouTube kind of test that whisker biscuit, and yeah. one of the things that he did was he just took the arrow and dropped it through, and dropped it through the old whisker biscuit, and the old whisker biscuit had more contact, so it stuck. Yeah. And that one just slid right through. So I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to try that. Yeah, and I also like that all of your bristles come from a flat spot. So as your your veins are going to be in this exact orientation. Mm -hmm. So it's straighter. How it goes, like you're saying about yeah. the drag. It's going to be less drag. It's going to be less resistance. It's going to be less impact on the arrow. Which is what we want. The less we can affect that arrow after the shot happens, the better off we're going to be. Very cool. Have you noticed like longevity of these bows? I mean, these kind of bows have been out for a while. They last a good yes. time. Um, the strings are the only thing that I it just, it's serving. Mm. So your servings will wear thin. Yeah. But the bows themselves are, are fantastic. I've not had, I don't think I've ever had one of these come back with an issue. That's good to know. <laughs> 
Yeah. It's been, and it's, they've been, so they have the species 2019 and 2020. Maybe 21 also. I think 21 also. And then they changed to the EV, which is a different cam. Yeah. 22 and then 23, they stuck with that. I'm hoping they stick with it this year. I don't, I don't know what you could do to this. I really, really like this bow. This is probably my favorite bow that Bear makes. Really? And it is Even over the Adapt? It, yes, yes. Wow. Yes. The Adapt is not a ton different. Yeah, I figured. It's, uh, if you get the Ready to Hunt package with that, you can get that with the uh, mm -hmm. Conway Rest, which is nice, and it's got a little bit better sight. But yeah, the bow itself is not a ton different. Not To me, it wasn't noticeable at all. Sweet. It's good to know. Don't have to pay the extra hundred bucks or so for it. <laughs> and with today's economy, that's important. All right, what are you thinking for arrows? Oh, so I'm actually gonna rely on you a little bit on this because okay. basically my goal is to make this a hunter. I, I know there's differences, minor differences between hunting and target, art, art, target archery and everything. I want of both of these bows to be set up to be killers. Okay. As best as we can, so I don't know if carbon's better or of we need more yeah, weight or is, is the answer. But there's so many different variations as far as your weights. Yeah. So if you're just well, what are you? We got a four pin sight, so that's fifty. Yeah, and if you just want to hunt and set up, we're gonna want to go on the heavier side. You know, a little bit on the heavier side. We're not scared to go a little bit. Have a little bit of weight with it. And I generally will not shoot further than 40 yards. Okay. I just won't do it. Okay. But we want to be able to, if you're out in the yard and you want to throw an arrow at 50, yep. you got a pin for it. We yeah, might as well, absolutely. We might as well not limit it that way. What, how much are you looking to spend on arrows? Oh, I'm hoping to get eight arrows. I mean, I think for each around one? that, yeah. Total? No, no, total. Total? Yeah. For each? For now. Okay. You know, obviously. You guys can shoot the same arrows? Yeah. Yeah, it makes life easier. Yes, it does. It definitely does. Yeah, like, Let me... I'm kind of open totally on on price with this, I think. Okay. So, decent, but like not break the bank, maybe? I don't okay. know if there's some such a thing. I, I mean. There certainly <clears throat> is. Um. So the pile driver is a really good hard hitting arrow. That's gonna be a, what, 10, 11. Yep, 11 greens per inch. So that's a heavy arrow. Mm -hmm. It's gonna hit hard. And we can even, they make a 100 grain insert we can put in it. And we can bring that FOC up a little bit and get it to probably five, 600 grain arrow. Wow. It'd be a tank. You wouldn't have to go that wild with it. I've got some that are 45 grain. I've got 75 grain. There's a few options if we wanted to put brass inserts in the end to make to load up that end of the arrow. I've also well, got part of me, and in, in obviously broadhead adds weight too, and everything, right? Because well, we'll match the broadhead weight with your point. Oh, okay. So whatever field point we put in, we'll match broadheads with that. Sweet. So it'll all fly the same. That's, That's going to be goal. cool. Yeah, that is the goal. All right. It's got to. Otherwise, all the practice you do. That's a fact. Is, yeah. I mean, it's beneficial, but then you got to recite everything in. Yep. When you put your broadheads on. We don't want to do that. No, no. The Axis is a, is a good arrow. It's a little bit smaller diameter. It's a little bit heavier. 9.5 in this one. So it's going to be dependent upon your weight. So what, what did we set that draw weight to? That's 60. 60. Okay. So you and that can go three, up. Maybe. I mean... Yep. It, it, that, so are you going to ever shoot it at 70? I, I didn't plan on it just because okay. like I don't feel like I need to. A lot of times you don't. But a lot of times you don't. if you think it's better to do it, then fine. Not necessarily. Yeah. Um, I'm not one of those macho I mean, guys that like, I got to do the heaviest, right, you know? Right. Um, I got nothing you, to prove. I mean, the heavier your poundage, the faster you're going to launch whatever your projectile is. Yep. So the harder it will hit. Mm -hmm. But is that necessary? Sometimes, sometimes, yeah, I mean, if you stick it right in the hard part of the shoulder blade, yeah, yeah, you'd want as much punch as you can, as you, could, yep, as yep. you could have. But is it worth the less comfortable draw mm. every time that you shoot that bow? 
planning on that one arrow that maybe messes up. That's that's a decision that. So maybe we bring it up to sixty five, split it in half. Okay. We can and because we should, because we're, like I said, I want to make it a killer. I'm not yep. doing you know yep. this for target. So if we're gonna do that, and if we do, let's plan that there's a chance you could just shoot seven. You might get to the point where you want to. Let's put a three hundred spine arrow. Because it doesn't, the spine of your arrow doesn't change the price of it. It'll change the weight of it. Mm -hmm. But we might as well plan for a stiffer arrow. Stiffer arrows usually will tune better. Yeah. If you're on the cusp, the stiff, you know, on your spine chart, if you're, if we're right on the, you're either a 340 or a 300 spine, it's always better to go with a 300. Okay. It's going to be, it's going to fly better. Okay. Um, easier to tune. Broadheads will fly better yeah. out of it. So let's go with a 300. And that puts us, we could do, in the 300, I've got these white ones. So those are 9.6 GPI. Unless, I say that with the exception of Carbon Express. So if we did the pile drivers, yeah. Carbon Express builds their arrows a little differently. Um, what was your draw length? 30. That? It is 30? Yeah. So at 30, yeah, at 30 pounds, I think we can go 76 pounds on the 350 spine. Nobody else's 350 spine is even close to that at 30 inch drop. Who makes the, these pile drivers? Or Carbon Express. Carbon Express. Are they like a, are they a U.S. company by chance? So the only arrow that is, is U.S. Eastern. made is Easton. Yeah. So. I kind of like doing the U.S. This year I'm shooting the yeah. 4 mil axis. Okay. And I, I shot the Victory VAP SS, or the VAP, yeah, the VAP SS, which would be this one. I shot this arrow last year, mm -hmm. and I love this arrow. I had no reason to change it. I loved how it flew. I just switched because I wanted to shoot Easton because they're made in America. Man, but they are pricey. Some of them, yeah. You can get so we could do this in a three hundred spine is six fifty an arrow. Oh wow! That's so not this bad at is all, a zero zero six straightness. So the straightness tolerance on that arrow is not as good. Mm hmm. I can do a little then bit more I've got than that. The, I've got this exact same arrow, same weight, same everything in a match grade 001. So if you wanted to do, well, doing four and four makes it a little tougher. You What's could do better? two and two. Well, because I was just thinking if you had some practice arrows, you could get. So sometimes people will do three and three, and you'll have three practice arrows and three hunting arrows. Mm -hmm. So we could do like three for you, three for him in yellow. Those will be your practice arrows. Uh -huh. Then we could do green, three and three, and these will be your arrows you put a broadhead on. Are going to be a straighter tolerance, and that wouldn't change the. It doesn't change the flight of the arrow at all. It's just they these arrows come down the same line and they check straightness. So they'll check straightness tolerance. If it's a good straight arrow and there it moves one thousandth or less, mm -hmm. they put this wrap on it. Okay. So in, in a silver stripe right here. If it wobbles more than. 3,000 because there's one in the middle that I don't typically carry. There's a 3,000th also. But if it wiggles four thousandths of an inch, they put this label on it. So the orange is the 006 or better. But they'll fly the exact same. You'll just have a little bit more wobble on your point if you roll it. Mm -hmm. You'll have just a little bit more wobble than this one would. And when you're hunting, when you're shooting field tips, you don't care because yeah. there's nothing out there to catch air. So oh, okay, gotcha. So bit, that it's not changes. Gonna be, it's not going to wobble enough to Understood. throw the center off of that arrow as it's spinning. But if you've got a broadhead on the end of it, that broadhead will catch air. Mm -hmm. So the blade catches air and will, can give you inconsistencies. Okay. So that's a. It's nice that they make them the exact same. So you can take if you want to go out to the 3D course or you're going to tack and you go go buy a dozen of those, take them out there with you. And bang them off of trees and beat the hell out of them. You don't care because they're six dollars yep. a piece, as opposed to fourteen fifty. Mm -hmm. So you're not beating up your good arrows, but it flies the exact same as your arrows that you. Used if you to think hunt that's with. a good way to do it, let's do it. I think it's a great, it's a great way to run it. All right. You gotta do three and three then. Um. Or do you gotta do two and two? Per one yeah, of us, per yeah. Person. So two. So eight, eight total. If I mean, unless yeah, that that'll, keep, that'll keep us at eight. Okay. So do you want to? Your practice arrows, do you want them yellow? Yeah, or yellow. Yellow practice? Yeah. Okay. Just make me remember it easier. Yeah, so these so will four have- Four of those and four of the others. So these will have the orange stripe. These are the 
field tip ones. Okay. And then we'll do green for the hunting arrows. And the greens will be the, the good ones. Sweet. Like it. Love it. Part of this video, guys, is I want to make sure that, like, if you're like me and you're, you know, not wealthy and you want to get into doing this and everything, you have options and can kind of see how to maximize, you know, ability to hunt with a price point, you know? So that's part of this video, and I hope, hopefully, it's coming through. I, I appreciate Brian for working with us on this. I know a lot of shop owners are like, hey, we want just want expensive stuff sold. Now, Brian seems to be great about that. So stay tuned, let's keep going. And so do you want these all cut at the same length? Because his draw length is an inch and a half shorter than yours. But do you want to keep the arrows the same length? I think that'd probably be smart because he's going to grow. Right. <laughs> his will hang out. I mean, it'll be this. At full draw, his arrow will stop here. Yeah, I don't think that'll That's matter much. That's not an issue at all. Unless if it does, but you apparently said no, it's not an issue. It's so not it doesn't. an issue in the least. And these will be a little bit overspined for him. But, like, again, he's going to. And you overspined arrows are just fine. Mm -hmm. And well, he won't be shooting beyond thirty, right? Because when I'm when I'm out with him, I'm gonna be like, nope, nope, nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's 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 a that's a big factor there. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So we are gonna run this. This is the saw. We're gonna cut the arrows out. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> What are we thinking for point weight? Do you want to run, well, do you want to run the standard inserts that it comes with? These are a 30 grain. I honestly- or do you want to load that tip up a little bit more? I don't know enough to know what I should do. Let's throw some brass ones on it. Because we're not worried about shooting distance. Then we might as well. Have it hit like a hammer. So this is a 75 grain brass insert. Nice. And so this is just going to add more front of center to your arrow. It's going to add more weight to it. And then, so with adding this weight, you wouldn't have to run it you could run a hundred grain point because the simplicity of if you go somewhere you go on a hunt somewhere and you forgot your broadheads so for some reason mm -hmm. somehow that happened and you got to find a broadhead you can go to any archery shop walmart dunham's anywhere you know anywhere like that and find hundred grain broadheads and you can find a bigger selection mm -hmm. than any other grain. So one of the, I, I become partial to Grim Reapers. Okay. And are they like in that range or, you know, does that change anything or? Doesn't change anything at all. Okay. I've got a lot, I've got more options in hundred grain for Grim Reaper than any other. Oh, when I said Grim, Grim Reapers, it looked like your eyes lit up, so. <laughs> Do people that shoot Grim Reapers seem to really like them and very rarely switch to something else. Yeah, so when the I- Reaper has a very loyal follow. I had the Muzzy uh, Fixed Blade Mechanical Hybrids mm -hmm. and they just didn't do a good job of letting out blood. Yeah. And I switched to Grim Reapers and <laughs> were incredible. <laughs> yeah, most, like I say, most people that shoot Grim Reapers don't ever shoot anything else. Yeah, that there makes are, sense. There are a few, but it's rare. Yeah. So yeah, I was thinking about switching to that, and that's one of the things we'll probably talk, be talking about, kind of the virtue between uh, fixed blade and mechanical with the compound bow. I use the mechanicals with the crossbow. Yep. Work great, but I don't know if, you know, that's the right option going compound or... So everybody's got their opinions, and everybody's got their stories of what happened one time. Yeah. Um, I think... I think the majority of situations you're gonna get a better blood trail with a mechanical. You're gonna get a bigger wound hmm. channel. You're gonna recover that deer faster. That's not always the case. Yeah. There are always circumstances where you shoot a mechanical broadhead and it didn't work out the way it you know, should have based on shot placement. Cause everything comes down to shot placement. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sometimes that Sometimes with a shot placement, 
the mechanical gave you that advantage and was the difference between you finding the deer and not, sometimes a fixed blade gives you that advantage and is the difference between finding the deer or not. So every, it's so hard to so hard to give an opinion on something that is so situational based. Yep. Um, I know that I've had more people come in lately that have lost their deer with while shooting a fixed head. Mm -hmm. And I can't say why that is. You know, it's like I say, every situation is very different. Well, and you've got so many factors with, you know, like whether they're a good shot, right. you know, are where they experiencing they, crazy buck fever? Sing, every single time the situation is where did that arrow hit that deer? Yeah. And sometimes people tell you, well, I hit it perfect. I hit it right here. But did they? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we don't know. We don't always know. And sometimes... Sometimes they don't, you know, sometimes something happens that they couldn't even catch. You yeah. know, maybe it was so fast that that deer turned a little bit mm -hmm. and they didn't notice it. You know, it's, there's so many, it's so hard. It is. And deer are fast. So, <laughs> like, let me, let me reiterate this. Deer are fast. If you shoot, when they hear that twang of the arrow, even if you got it silenced or, or whatever, they duck fast. Yeah, it's react. incredible. That's why, like, my rule is not shooting over 40. And that's with my crossbow, too. And a lot of people are like, well, a crossbow, well, my crossbow only shot 333 feet per second, which is like a modern bow anyways. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to shoot over 40 yards because those deer will drop fast. Now, if you're watching this and you're like, well, I'll shoot it out to 60, 80 yards, whatever, cool. If you're comfortable with that and you still kill deer consistently and don't wound them, more power to you. For me, that's my rule because they're fast and I want to make sure it's dead. <clears throat> right, you got to go to sleep at night. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. Is <laughs> That's it. I've got to feel good about what happens, and I've got to be able to sleep at night. Yeah. And if I wound one, it's going to be rough. Yeah. So I'm not willing to take that risk. And some people are confident enough at different distances that they're willing to take that risk. But it's hard. I mean, you can be a really good shot at 80 yards. But that animal, it's a live animal. Yeah. And so that's always the variable. It's a live animal that does react. So far, and hopefully I keep my record up, I have not shot a deer and not recovered it. Perfect. That's never happened. Perfect. I always have recovered. Now, could it, could it happen? It could. Well, I had a bad shot last year. I, I spined a doe. And fortunately, I didn't have to find her. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> she just kind of, it was sad. I was in, I was in this uh, climbing stand. You can see the video if you go to the YouTube channel. I was in a climbing stand. And uh, she came in at like five yards last light. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, crap. So I, I took my shot and just floop in the, it, it, the camera turns on when the arrow shoots. Yeah. And she flops over and starts screaming. Mah! I'm like, oh, no. It's not great for film. And she's kicking and whatnot. And then I'm like, it takes me 10 minutes to get out, which I cut that all out and everything, right. you know. But then, um, but yeah, I had to finish her off and everything. Not, mm, You never want to do that, right? Yeah, ah, it breaks your heart. Yeah, it does. The first deer I ever shot, I was 12. And uh, I was out hunting with my grandpa. And I didn't, he just took a bucket out and was going to sit in the bucket, sit on a bucket. And he, <laughs> I shoot this, it was a spike and I shot it and I didn't know it dropped, you know, it was at like 12 yards and I had an old Oneida at 40 pounds. And so my, I had a red dot sight, so it was sighted in at 20 yards and the drop from a, you know, it was a he old heavy aluminum arrow mm -hmm. and the drop was apparently significant because at 12 yards it hit about that high and so that was right in his spine and he just dropped and started bellering and I, was mm -hmm. like, should I, I should put another like shoot it again but I was like I don't know where my grandpa is I don't want to miss if he's over in this area I just was trying to be safe and yep. not have any incidents where I shot my grandpa <laughs> and uh, <laughs> That'd be good. he's hard of hearing mm -hmm. so he doesn't hear anything on. So I'm standing out there hollering and it took I'll bet 20 minutes before he come up out of the swamp, come walking up and he was way over to the left. I could have shot the deer. Yeah. And it would have been fine. But yeah. I didn't know you that. You didn't know your kid, yeah. right? All right. Got the arrows. Let's tune figured out with this one. Tuning. Just because I like it. Yes. That's the one that he likes. This is the I'm over here with you. So you got your release? I do not. It's another thing I'm going to have to get. Oh, perfect. All right, let's go look at releases and then we will. Okay. So for my index fingers, yeah, we've got.
got. Looks like we're 60 to $125. We're in that range. I think That's because I have to get one for each of us, okay. that the $60 range is going to be the... <laughs> I like this release. Yeah? The only thing that I wish they had done was put a set screw in. A what? To stop your a set screw. I'm going to grab one more though because I want to just try it maybe. That one, if you if you don't mind, because I kind of like the way it looks. And my boy can deal with that one if I like that one. Yeah, I like that one too. So B3, you so it used to be Scott Archery. So Scott releases, okay. mm -hmm. sold, and then signed a non-compete, I'm sure. And so couldn't make, and so then when. I don't know if it was just one of their engineers or if it was the guy who started. I don't know. Ex I don't. Know, I don't remember the exact story. But basically, these look so much like the old Scott releases because there is a very close correlation between them and the old Scott and the original Scott releases that were around forever. So the set screw. So this, as you turn this, mm -hmm. it'll make it longer or shorter. Yeah. Well, once you get it set where you like it, there's no set screw to lock it. Oh. So you've got to just take a, I tell people, just take electrical tape and wrap it so it can't turn. And then this will stay still, but this will still turn. I see. That makes sense. So you still want this to be able to move, yep. but you don't want this to move. So you just tape, you tape this yep, to this, right? Electrical tape. Yep. Yeah, just okay. tape these two pieces together once you get it. And I tell everybody, like, shoot it as short as you can. Yeah. So. Because you're wanting the draw length to not change. Right. Well, and it's, you want your... You want to be more here with your trigger. You don't want to be out here. So your finger is the jumpiest out mm -hmm. at the point. Ideally, we want really? to be toward this knuckle. I have never shot that way. It's, it's so hard to get people to change. Really? So okay. Bow That's going to be... Bow hunters are typically the worst. Like people that have bow hunted forever. Yeah. They know how they shoot and they are not changing. Uh -huh. Like, nope. This is how I shoot and this is what's comfortable. <laughs> That's why I totally went with this because I was terrified of the thumb release, you know? Yeah. Like that is weird to me. I'm like, I don't, I just stick with my finger. <laughs> yeah. And that's fine. Uh, I switched. So I just was like watching professional archers uh -huh. when I was younger. I just decided like, you know what? If all the professionals are shooting a handheld release, there might be a reason for that. Yeah, I might packed. want to go that way. Yep. And so I just had my wife order, you know, this is years ago. I just told my wife, this is what I want. And she ordered it for me. She, you know, we found the one that I liked and she ordered it. And I've still got it right here. This is my first handheld. That's so weird. Yeah. And it's really loud. Like when I, now that I play with it, like this one is oh, wow. very, very loud. I shot that. I shot deer with that. I shot two of the deer on that wall with it. Really? And yeah, shot it for like seven years. Never tried anything else, never. I, mm -hmm. It shot great and I loved it and I shot more accurately with it. So I had no reason to ever try anything else. Well, when I got in here, or when I opened the shop, I was like, well, I better shoot something that I sell. And uh, so I tried a few different options and I ended up with a, I've got a, Synapse, two pair synapse somewhere. So comfortability is a big thing. Um, ease of use is nice. So like with this one, actually I just put another one right here. I just got, I just gave one to my wife. But the way it attaches to the bow is really nice because when you're shooting, so like hunting it, it's nice too. So like you just come up from the bottom mm -hmm. and it'll hang there. And so when you shoot, you just reset that button every time you shoot. And it's so easy for the guy because I should know the D loop. Hmm. And so that's what I really liked. And it's got this spring that holds it in place. Okay. And so I shot a stand before this, and I loved the stand. I had no reason to change, really. Other than I was becoming a dealer for something else, and I wanted to. Actually, somebody let go of this one at full draw, so it broke all the pieces. Oh. But this one, 
is just the other way. So it's I always use my middle finger, yeah, the side of my middle finger to push it on. Uh huh. But and this one's not bad either. They let go of it at full draw. Yeah, he let go of it. He was drew it back, was finding his anchor, and it just slipped out of his fingers. Oh no! And it was uh, it was a Hoyt carbon. Oh. So it's got that bridge on the back. Uh huh. And it come up and smashed into that and broke the rat. Broke the riser. Oh, uh, how's the bow fare? Not good. It went back to Hoyt. Yeah. Yeah, it went back to Utah. Rah. And uh, they put a new riser on it for him. And they took care because we called them and told them what happened, and they were. Like we were honest with them about mm -hmm. what it was, and they were like, "We appreciate you being honest. You know, we're gonna, we got to replace this riser. We got to charge you, but we're not gonna charge you full price." Oh wow! We're gonna take care. You know, we'll help you out with it. That's awesome. So he was happy because it was a two thousand dollar boat. We just put a release through. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But we. So where did I put that? This guy. We're gonna throw this on. See how you like it. Alrighty. So let's so pull try draw so just draw the bow back and see where it puts that once you put some weight on it. So come down just a little bit. How's your peep height look? It's it's good. It might be a hair hair low. Okay, we can pick it up. Maybe, maybe, but maybe not. Yeah, just get close your eyes and get comfortable with your anchor. When you open them, where is it? Is it too high? No, I don't think so. No, does it look good? Does it line up with I'm this? I'm not very good with getting my anchor right because. So if you, you I want your kisser button. Oh, do you want a kisser on it? Uh, I don't know. Do you think I should, or do you think it's? I don't know, I'm standing, on, I'm standing on the wrong side of you to look and see. Well, we certainly can. Let's see what this side looks like. Well, we got, did it. No, we're still there. No, so you got, no, a kisser perfect, wouldn't. Actually. So a kisser wouldn't help. So can you, if you bring this knuckle down under your earlobe, keep coming down with it just a little bit. Really? There we go. So the tip of your nose, see how the tip of your nose touches the back side of the string? Yeah and you're running the string through the corner of your mouth, yeah. you've got a lot less face pressure pushing oh, on the okay. side of that string. So uh, with this though, then it's way low. That's okay, we can pick that up. Yeah. So go ahead and shoot that through the paper. I'm gonna have to drop that back down because I can't see through this sight. All right. That wasn't bad. It's not That's terrible, we can. This yeah. felt so fun to shoot, by the way. We finally got to do it. <laughs> oh, because we didn't shoot it last time you ran, no, did we? We did. I've been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> How's that look? It yeah, looks good. Is this you got a little less face pressure. If you could bring your hand down a little further, I'd like it even better. That's right. I, I always, I've always kind of covered the ear. Higher, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's you've got your cheek pushes sideways on that string oh, a lot when you're up sense. that high, yeah. and so we don't want lateral pressure on the string. So like that, I, I can deal with that. All right. So Shoot. try not. So come up a little bit. We're gonna hit the same hole, I think. Okay. There we go. Shoot. Yep. Closer. Uh, oh, oh, Closer. Uh, it's progress. So when you're paper tuning, what are you actually? So we want to see just the shaft go through the paper in the three veins where they slice. But so you can see our tip is going through here and our tail is up here. Oh, so okay. we want that. We want to bring those together. I so always it's coming wondered. Out straight. I, I had no idea what it was for. I just knew people did it. Right. So I was wondering what in the world that was for. Awesome. See, we learned something new. Some products. So if we're going to go In this area, I like the car, the Pro Three Blade from Grim Reaper. Mm -hmm. I like the Wreck. If you're gonna go two blade, Wreck are made in Michigan. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's Down cool. In um, G5 is made in Michigan. You got the Dead Meat. This is a that would be a good choice for your specs. This one is not a bad choice either. The sick, 
This is a two blade. This is mm -hmm. a two blade, but it's offset. Mm -hmm. you know, one blade on either side of the ferrule, so it looks like this. So it just opens that cut up this way just a little bit extra. Huh. Instead of having them in a straight line. So that's not a bad option. Crossbow over there. Yeah, these are a hybrid fixed and mechanical. I don't know. That so my is. biggest thing is I'm trying to be cheap and they come with four. That's a big, yeah. That's, <laughs> and, and that yeah. way we each have two broad heads for our... Oh. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Two, I think that's the I think, that's, I think the that's the winner then. If that's the one you're saying, that's we need to go with. This one is made of steel. It only comes with three, though. This is a practice. Yeah, and a practice. That, that one loses. No, I think I think I think I think we're gonna go one. here. Let's do that one. Let's do that. So this is the one. So when we're going with Grim Reapers again, you guys are used to these. So we're gonna stick with. Hey, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? I think that's a good choice. And we killed us some deer. All right, so we got that. Got our our uh, rest picked out, so apparently I'm going with the B3 Alpha there. Yep. And Flip's going to have the Trophy Ridge shootout. Shootout. Looks like that. All right, so when you're looking at this before you shoot for the first time, like when you take your son's home, so starting point, take your two fingers, just hold them there and look and your 20 should be pretty close to the middle of those. It's, a, it's just a starting point, mm -hmm. but that's where I start them all. And then if you line your string up with the center of your rest, you want your pins to be just on, the, for a right-handed shooter, you want your pins to be just on the left side. Okay. So that part we're gonna have to move just a little bit. Let's hand this off to you. And that first uh, pin is 20, right? Yep, your top pin will be 20. Okay. Uh. So before you hit that trigger, yep, reach down and feel and know exactly where it is. We're really close. Yeah, actually. And that could be an easier error. Let's do it one more, huh? Top left. That's better. A hair high. Both of those were just a hair high. But... Bottom left. a little bit better <laughs> okay we can deal with that so that is pretty much what it takes to switch from crossbow over to compound bow and get yourself a new compound. Brian's great. Make sure you guys come out to, Mary, or to Untamed Archery in Marion and uh, check out everything that they've got. I mean, they've got everything you need to get started, to go out. He's super patient. I mean, when we were paper tuning, it was more human error than anything. And uh, super patient, took the time that I needed to be able to make sure my bow is going to kill deer. And I'm sure he'll do that for you guys too. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It looks like he's putting the arrows into the bow right now. 
And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed, the, enjoyed this video. If you have never gotten out and hunted and you want to, go out and do it. Get out in the outdoors, have fun, love it, and do it. So I guess until next time, guys, God bless. If you liked today's video, please like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on all the new content that we post regularly. Also, if you would like to see more from Truax Outdoors, check out our channel where we have playlists with hundreds of other videos like this one. And as always, until next time, God bless.